You know, I've been through some pretty brutal fist fights in my time. And what my body was feeling after that first race, I just wanted to drink Coca-Cola and water and lay down. But that feeling of having done it, you know, still sprinted across that finish line and to feel that level of competition again, even though most of it was obviously inside myself, I felt pretty accomplished after it, honestly. I mean, I was disappointed in the time and that's when things start to spiral into that need to do more and more. For me, it's really about just how good can I get in this small amount of time that I have to do it. And I just enjoy doing it, but I want to be top at least of my age group. I don't know what age that's going to be, but that's the goal, whether it's this one or the next one. But I will be the first place winner in my age group at least. Ready to do some punching and kicking and stuff? I'm kind of excited, actually. You should be. It's been, it's been a while. I'm in fucking shape, I'll tell you that. Well, I know you're in shape. Let's go hit some stuff. Uh, awesome. I look back on my career and I'm happy with it. I didn't get to where I wanted. I wanted to become a champion. But in MMA, there's only a few guys that ever get to say they were a champ. You know, I got to number six in the world. I never quit. I'd like to think I was a bit of a fan favorite for my style and the way I brought it. I always kept true to myself. I was always who I was. I always fought for something more than just me. And I think it was time to go. I feel like I went out leaving a little bit left. I left on my terms. I wasn't asked to leave. I wasn't nudged like, hey, maybe it's time to retire. In fact, people now even still are like, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? And I'm not. <laughs> I think my MMA career really influenced who I am as a person and who I am as a person really influenced how I was as a fighter and how I approached the game. For me, being a professional athlete is about really pushing the limits and pushing the boundaries and going a little further each time, right? You always start somewhere, but I also get really obsessed with looking at the people that are really good at something. If they can do that, what do I have to do to do that? And slowly but surely, day after day, you push a little bit more, you push a little bit more, and I would get there. So for me, it's that process. It's never really even been about the event. It's been about the day in and day out. I like that. I like living that lifestyle when it comes to those nitty gritty pushes towards those like last bursts of, hey, I need to get ahead of this guy, you'll see like that that raw, rough, rugged style of Paul come out where he'll be willing to, you know, dig harder in the pool or dig harder on the bike or push that last sprint when he, you know, if he, if it's the difference between a PR and not a PR and Paul needs to get after it, he'll get after it. It's a shame it's not really sunny. I have no excuse to really wear some absolutely ridiculously oversized sunglasses right now. I mean, you can't really do a proper training run as a as a triathlete without ridiculous sunglasses, right? Now I fit in. Now it's, yeah. I'm blending the worlds, Ashley. You see how I'm doing this? I'm putting a UFC thing with a triathlon thing. I think everybody was ready for me to just calm down, right? And all right, you're done fighting. You're not going to get hurt anymore. I don't think anybody was anticipating that I was going to lose my mind if I didn't have that. My fight with Dan Hooker was in February, fresh into 2020. And then everything, the world shut down. There was like nothing. You had to order things to the house. You couldn't go anywhere. And I was losing it and getting big and getting a little bit unhealthy. And, you know, we're stuck inside and you're drinking some beers, you're eating some crap and you're not working out. So I started running and through running, I started getting into looking up triathlon type stuff. And I ordered a bike, like a spin bike that I kept up in my closet in my old apartment. So it was in like a little teeny, I mean, like a walk-in closet, but not a big one. So that's how it just started kind of creeping into my life. For sure, the thing that really got me noticing the sport was definitely stumbling upon my man, Lionel Sanders, Mr. No Limits himself, because the workouts that he, this guy was doing is what fascinated me. I, I couldn't believe the numbers. And at the time, I didn't even really know much about these numbers, but I'm like, you're running what pace, in what degrees? It was the Arizona run, where he does like a threshold or a tempo run, and it's like 110 degrees. And I remember the cameraman's like, so what are we about to do? And he's like, something stupid. What are we doing today? doing something stupid for the camera. We're gonna exercise in, right now it's 100. It'll be probably 104 by the time we get to the main set. And he's got his shades on. He's got his 
headphones. I even went and found those headphones that he was wearing. And he just absolutely murders this workout out in like the desert of Arizona on this blacktop road on this trail. And I was like, that's cool. And then I started getting into the sport and I learned that there's, you know, sprint distance, Olympic distance, and you know, half distance. So Lionel is how I found it and YouTube really. I started wanting to do triathlon training more than I wanted to get up every morning and go and spar or go and grapple. I, I wanted to get on the bike. I wanted to go to the pool and swim. It was something new that I wasn't good at yet that I wanted to become good at that I thought I could become good at. And that obsession and that drive for that started to outweigh my desire to really put my body through any more in, in the sport of MMA. You know, he's still very determined and he's focusing on whatever workouts he needs to do. He spent three and a half hours on a bike in the garage yesterday working out. Someone came up to him when he was running on a track, like locally, and the first thing they said was like, what's it take? You know, I'm a huge fan, what's it take? And he was just like, you don't, you don't quit, you make it your life. You eat, sleep, breathe, live every second of your day, whatever you're focused on. My first race in Virginia, Blue Ridge, was obviously a 70.3. And everybody told me, don't do that one to start. You should definitely go do a sprint, do a duathlon, do a half marathon race, do, do a couple races to get yourself ready for that type of race. And. I was just down in this basement one day, hanging out in my little man cave area. It was like 5.30 in the morning. I just got up, I couldn't sleep, I, and I signed up for that distance. And I was like, I'm, that's now the distance, so now I, that's what I'm gonna train for. And I went to that race not having any idea what I was getting involved in. I didn't know how to look up a course and like what, what the grades were gonna be on you know, how hilly a bike was gonna be or not. And I end up on the Blue Ridge Mountains and there's this one like five mile climb on this bike ride. All the guys the whole week are talking about this climb and I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And they're like, oh man, this race starts off of the bike course is just like straight uphill. I was like, oh. some guys are talking about being on road bikes. Everybody changed out their cassettes. I'm like, what? what? I don't have race tires on. I have my regular old training tires on. I barely have a proper bike fit that I've maybe been on for like a week and um, I came in like 22nd in my age group, but I almost died on the half marathon. I remember that half marathon in 90 degree heat and humidity. <sighs> That's when I finally got that true respect for the sport. I was like watching guys running by me at, you know, six minute miles, 55 years old. I'm like, what, what am I doing wrong? Who am I gonna compare myself to? The 37 year old guy who got off the couch like a G, just started jogging and swimming. It's like, I'm gonna do an iron, man. I can't compare myself to him because I'm already a, a better athlete than that, right? I, re, I mean, I went right from MMA straight into another sport. Now, granted, I hadn't ever done it, but just physically, I should be at an advantage. I've become obsessed with the bike. They're super fast and it's all about your legs, right? Even as a fighter, I was somebody that had some pride in the fact that I, I'm, I'm bottom heavy. I got, I got big calves, I got big legs, I kick hard, I can do the bike. And I got into the bike, love that. Running was rough just because I've always been decent at running, but my feet were really bad. I've got some hip problems, so that slowed me down a little bit. But now I feel pretty strong in the run and I'm starting to, lo I love running now. It's probably one of the favorite things that I do on a daily basis. I really rag on myself about the swim, but it's definitely my weakest. I grew up in this inner city. The only pools I really had at my fingertips were the public pool that you went and splashed around in that probably had broken glass at the bottom of it. So my relationship with water hasn't been great, so that's definitely my weakest part. I would like to be placing in the top of the, these races other than the professionals. Do you know what I mean? Like I know that I, I won't be able to compete with the best pros in the world just because time isn't on my side, but I feel like I can be placing in the top 10 of everyone in the race. I think I'm pretty far still. You know, obviously I don't have a head start on this one. That, that's, what's, that's what bothers me. That's what kind of irks me now. I'm like, I'm glad I was a fighter, right? That's something I can always hold my, tip my cap on. But I wonder if I got into this in my 20s, I wonder how good I could have gotten.
I'm putting the time in for sure. I actually just upped the volume a little bit of hours because I was starting to get up a little earlier and I talked to my coach. I was like, I think we can up it a little bit because basically he was telling me on the plan that we're on, you know, with the time that you've got, you know, you're right there in your age group. So I, was, I found a little bit more time. It's nothing crazy, but I think within a year or two, I could be close to that goal. It, you know, and I got some races coming up this year that I'm excited to push some limits on. I think the first one's going to be a little rough, right? Get, getting back into it. But I think by the fall, I'll be pretty comfortable out there. I enjoy this process. It hurts so good. I like that, right? I feel like all the people that end up flocking to this sport we all have that. Like, I can look around a room, you could be 65, you could be 50, you could be 22, and you could be, you know, the best kid in the room. But we all know that what drives us is feeling that most people would have quit. You didn't.